Hello. Um, so my name is Joseph. I am the uh, former team captain of 18457 Gator Bikes, and I was our um, engineering uh, chief engineer for our robot on the software and hardware teams this year. Um, so this presentation is just going to be an overview of our Road to Worlds, um, some of our team overview, uh, flashbacks, um, how we kind of progressed our way through the season, and some key decisions we made throughout the year that we believe um, led to us being able to win the World Championships as the Winning Alliance captain, and sharing some of those decisions and how um, you can make similar decisions that could help your team. Um, so a little bit about us, um, our philosophy, um, we have a quote. Uh, from a TV show. It's that a man can do anything when he is realizes that he is a part of something bigger. A group of people with that same mindset can change the world. Um, and so that's just something that our team kind of lives by. Um, we work with it a lot um, as we go throughout our seasons. Um, and it's just something that we can always remember um, that really helps us. Um, we're from Newbury Park, Abbott's Academy in Newbury Park, California. And um, we have last year we had 18 members from grades 9 through 12 and with 30 years combined first experience from our team or school team. And then our season goals, we were to build strong, inspire, and robot qualities to maximize our chance of getting the worlds. And that all kind of goes back to um, some of our flashbacks. So an ultimate goal we competed online. We didn't have a great robot, but we still did okay. And we won the Adams Robotics League Remote Championship top rank and inspire award. And we would have ranked eight best SoCal regionals as we would have competed. Uh, then the week before frenzy, um, we had higher aspirations for the next season, um, but it kind of fell flat. Uh, we had an okay robot, and then we got the SoCal regionals. We had a one plus five um, freight auto. It nothing worked, and we ended up being ranked thirty third. And nothing came of it. And it was it hit our team hard because. Um, we thought we'd do better, and we didn't. And even though we had a good robot, we had done all the engineering on it, nothing worked. And so that just kind of made us realize that we can't overlook anything. We have to look at every single part of our robot, and everything has to be perfect. We have to create a set of rules for our robots that we build that have to be uh, followed um, throughout the season. And so our team got together and a few of our members, we sat down and while everybody was at Worlds having fun, uh, we were in school and we just watched Worlds and we, we sat there and it, it hurt to watch everybody else at Worlds have all this fun. Um, but we let it motivate us going into power play. Um, so moving on, our goals for power play, um, it was quite simple. Uh, advanced to Worlds from SoCal, who had three slots to Worlds. Um, which later after SoCal got in, actually bumped up the four because first gave the last slot to us. Um, and so because of that, we knew we would have to either win Inspire Award first place, be the winning alliance captain, Inspire Award second place, or luck into being the first pick while the captain also gets Inspire. Um, and since SoCal is a really, really hard Inspire region, um, uh, 12525 Wolf Corp was one of the world's uh, Inspire finalists in Freight Frenzy. Uh, we knew we'd really have to step our game up. Um, so some of the things we did for outreach, um, we tried to do a lot of uh, open source uh, libraries. We released three of those. We mentored a bunch of teams. Uh, we raised a bunch of money for charity. Um, and this is all stuff that we um, just tried to do to um, increase our chances of getting inspired because we knew that was our theoretical best chance of getting to Worlds to reach our goal. Um, but it wasn't going to be um, the easiest thing to do because it's, it's SoCal after all. So we could go next slide. Okay. Um, so those, those are just a few of our numbers that we had for outreach. Um, just kind of gloss over them because this is more robot based instead of outreach. Um, but we did a lot of outreach because we wanted to maximize our chance of getting to worlds um, because getting to worlds is just step one in the process of winning worlds. You can't win worlds without being there. And getting there is now really, really hard with there only being one world championship. Um, it's no longer in Houston and Detroit, it's just in Houston. Um, so we really try to step our game up in both robot and outreach areas. So we can go next slide. Um, so our, our power play game reaction. Um, this is These are things that our team does um, every year. And so we sit down after uh, kickoff and we sit down with a bunch of whiteboards and a few old Tetris parts, and we start building ideas. And these ideas often um, aren't working models. They're cardboard and Tetris or whiteboard drawings of just anything. And just we let our minds just 
completely go free with no outside influences without seeing other YouTube videos and just creating um, our own ideas and development, developing robots from the ground up. Um, so we figured out that uh, early season is gonna be single junction cycling. So we knew we'd have to be good at that early season to um, do well in our league. Um, pass through or turret will likely be an optimal design because of how fast it is in Heliop. And a dual extension could be good, um, but requires you getting to your scoring position in auto first, um, which uh, ended up being a large uh, part of us winning worlds. Um, the scoring cap causes everybody to be good. So the higher you go in robotics, uh, the closer the skill gap gets. So when you're at your ILT, a good team will do really, really well. And there's a wide range of um, how teams are. As you go to your regional, your state championship, teams get better. Uh, the skill gap gets tighter. As you get to Worlds, it gets even closer. All the teams at Worlds are good. Everybody's um, gone through the ringer. They've done all these all this hard work throughout the entire season. And it's just what you have to do um, to differentiate yourself, um, which is really important. So, um, so this is our first robot. Uh, we built it as a prototype, which is parts we had laying around, and one of our uh, freight frenzy drive trains. They had a bunch of issues. We fixed them. We went six and four within the weeks. Uh, we had a average of seventy for our OPR, and we averaged one hundred and two points per match. Uh, it wasn't very good, but it was okay. Um, so our team takes information from this robot and we feed it into our uh, design and engineering team. And we start going through and we start iterating in CAD and doing uh, tests. Um, so after Artemis 1, uh, we progress to Artemis 2. And Artemis 2 is a completely CAD and out robot. Um, it was never built. It was just a pass-through design with a roller intake. Um, uh, we ended up not using it because we found some issues with it when we were doing some testing. So uh, we... Uh, scrapped Artemis 2, and we progressed on to Artemis 3. And Artemis 3 was the first of our turret robots, um, which um, we had at Worlds was uh, our turret. Um, but what Artemis 3 uh, also had is horizontal extension. Um, so horizontal extension um, was something that we were seeing on a lot of robots. There was a lot of dual slide robots that had that horizontal extension. Um, but we were having issues with how the weight was just distributed across the robot. And so we didn't use it at all. Um, it was just left as a CAD model. Um, so yeah, so that's Artemis 3. Um, it was a turret. We never tested um, it fully because we didn't build anything because parts are expensive and our team um, is not extremely well off financially. So we didn't build it, but it was a concept that we had that we knew we had a place to build from. Um, and from there, our team basically was like, wait, we're not going about this right. All of our designs have issues. We need to create a set of rules. And the set of rules will allow us to create a robot that's limitless. So by creating rules, we're creating an unlimited potential in our robot. Um, so we sat down with our engineering team and we wrote out basically an engineering manifesto. And this is a term used a lot in the automotive industry, um, specifically uh, by the likes of Gordon Murray with the McLaren F1. Uh, T.50, as well as uh, many race cars. And so the man engineering manifesto basically just is a list of rules that your engineering team has to live by um, to accomplish a set of goals. And so our robot um, throughout the year, we had four goals. And the four goals were basically um, things that we would have to do to accomplish um, our goal of getting the world. Um, so goal one was a turret design to allow us to stay away from the center line in auto. Um, because we knew that there was going to be contact there later in the season. Um, goal two, we must be able to have a six-cone auto, as otherwise there will be teams that have six-cone autos and we will lose. Um, the robot should be unable to be tipped over because previous robots we had were tipping. And so we wanted the robot to be impossible to be tipped over when fully extended and driving. And goal four was the um, robot must be fast enough to sc score all 30 cones in Teleop because that allows us to solo carry a match. Um, so those four goals, we um, then branched off to create a set of eight rules. And these eight rules are the rules that our entire engineering team lived by for four and a half to five months um, between uh, November all the way to through Worlds. And um, I'll just highlight a few of them. Uh, the robot's footprint not, must not exceed 37 by 37 centimeters. Um, this is for easy navigation. 
Um, the robot must not weigh more than 13 kilograms, um, as that is um, the threshold weight that we said that we could be fast, light, and still um, very um, strong and reliable. Um, and the other, th other point I'm going to touch on is point three. All the, uh, the robot's um, mass, only 30% of it can be above the wheels. The rest of the other 70% must be below the top of our wheels. Um, so that's one thing that we would have to take into consideration when designing a robot. So if we could go into the next slide. So this allowed us to create Artemis IV, uh, which we use at our ILT and regional competitions. Um, it has a turret and it looks similar to our world's robot. It was not a pass-through. It had a coaxial differential claw that could rotate um, and pick up fallen cones. But it wasn't very good. It had a lot of issues. It was heavy. And it was still, the, some of the rules on our list, we broke to build this robot. And we didn't feel right leaving it like that. Um, so after regionals, um, we sat down. And while we were, our some of members of our team were on a mission trip in Spain, we're like, how do we do this? And we just wrote out an entire list of everything that was wrong with this robot and how we would fix it for Worlds, which is about, at this point, six weeks away. Um, so we would go on to create Artemis V, which is um, our fifth and final design, which we had at Worlds. And this has a very um, a few key things um, overviewed, and one of which is our pass-through arm with our pole guide. And the biggest thing with this is we designed it specifically um, to target certain um, ways teams were placing cones in auto. And we did this because we knew, um, as like the overall set of teams at Worlds, that um, there it's good. We're going to have to go through certain types of robots in in the chance of an elimination in elimination rounds, and so we does we watched hours upon hours of videos of other robots scoring and how they were scoring cones, and we specifically designed the um, pole guide and uh, deposit mechanism on our on the end of our arm to basically move the junction a lot when it's driving away while stabilizing it as we go up really really well, um, and this was all done just with like. If we can score and cause the other team not to score, um, it's a point differential over the match. So if we can go to Artemis 5, the next slide. Uh, so that's our world's robot. Um, it met every single one of the eight rules we made. So that was the one thing we're really proud of with it, is that we met all eight of our rules that would accomplish our four goals. And so um, on there is just some of the stats on it. We have uh, 1 plus 5 auto, 1 plus 7 max auto. Uh, our drive was within our constraints. Our weight was um, under our weight limit. And we had uh, our center of gravity. I'm at the point where it should be. And we're really excited to get um, ready for Worlds. And getting ready for Worlds is um, very stressful, as our team had um, five members on a music tour the week before Worlds. So everything had to be done two weeks before Worlds, as well as all of our drive practice. So moving into Worlds, uh, next slide, please. Um, we knew that going in, we were in Edison, and we looked at the Edison, list from Edison, and we knew it was going to be a very hard division. There is some amazing teams in there, Terabats, Brainstormers, VC Silver Circuits, Overcharged, um, and we knew it was going to be a lot harder to get through that division um, because these teams have name recognition. Um, so one of the big things that we did is we, would, uh, we went through every single uh, team, and we would invite them all to scrimmages at our hotel because we would have a field at Worlds. And so this is um, our first big point that led to us um, having a really good shot at uh, winning Worlds is that we had a bunch of extra practice time with quality control. So quality control was one of the few teams that came over to our hotel. And we were able to get hours of practice with them both uh, Tuesday and Wednesday night, which um, allowed us to go into our matches with um, a bit extra strategy planning that um, other teams uh, didn't have because there are certain tricks we figured out in that meeting that led to our strategy that we would deploy in ellipse. And the first thing that we would figure out is that the optimal strategy is what everybody was chasing. So coming in through all the state championships, all the regional championships, there is tons of different strategies being played. Um, teams are placing phones and substations uh, and terminals, still scoring them out of terminals to uh, junctions and end game. And so we just uh, were like, what's going to be the optimal strategy? And we knew it wouldn't be found out until we were at Worlds because there were so many different strategies being played. 
So at Worlds, um, we were testing with quality control at our hotel, and we basically figured out that the optimal strategy for our robot was to mirror. So the second the other alliance places a cone, we place a cone there because the set, because as soon as they place a cone, they're at a, uh, in a cone deficit. And we would always then be able to keep ownership um, while uh, equating the deficits between the two alliances. So by just mirroring, we're automatically at an advantage to other alliances. Um, so what this allowed us to do is it allowed us to go um, do really well in our qualification matches. Going into Worlds, once we got our match schedule, um, we were projected to go off of our predictions only three and eight. And we knew from there we could go only up because three and eight was not great. We were going to uh, rank like uh, somewhere like 30 to like 40, um, somewhere in there. And that was uh, really, really bad for us. Um, but we knew going into the world, there was a few keys. And so matches are really important. Your scouting is one of the most important things. It's how do you play against other teams in qualification matches, as well as eliminations, your partners, where do they need to run against? Who do they need to run against a different team? Um, if, if you're more versatile, um, one plus five safe autos on the high junction, as well as medium autos. Um, how is the race to the center line going to happen with dual extension robots? And uh, what teams are getting possession penalties? Because um, as the term goes, penalty play, uh, there's a lot of penalties this year. Um, and then strategy, stall strategy was something we deployed, the, the mirror strategy, and then defense. How much center line defense will, will be played and whose arms will tangle with ours, which we found out there was one team that would. Um, so our qualification match recap, on average, uh, we performed way above our projections. Um, so the light green line is our projected match score and our uh, dark green line is our actual uh, match score. Uh, we dipped below it a few times, um, namely against uh, VC Silver Circuits and Auto Vortex. Um, and our partner was also ranked 48. So there was a huge point differential there. Um, but other than that, uh, we knew we were doing fairly well because we were above our projections while our partners were often a little bit below their projections. Um, and so after we finished 8-3, we were ranked 5. And Thursday night, we would go through all of the ma remaining matches and we basically created a six um, part set of how the rest, how Friday would play out. So Friday would play out a, num a number of different ways. And we basically saw ourselves ending up as either the four five or six seed um, at the end of all of it. And so because we figured we'd end up as the four five or six seed, we knew we'd have to figure out our scouting. So that night we figured out, we figured out all of our scouting uh, ran match data and pulled all the information that we could about um, different teams in our division as well as projecting who would get picked where based off information we'd gotten Thursday. Um, so if we can go on to the next slide. Um, so going into line selection, uh, the big question that we've gotten asked is why did we pick quality control and VC Silver Circuits? Um, they were ranked 17 and 18th in Edison division. Um, the biggest thing about quality control that we saw in them was their one plus five safe auto. Um, we ran it a bunch at our hotel and we helped them uh, tune it up when it, there was a part on the robot that kept breaking. We were able to get that fixed. So their one plus five safe was more consistent. Um, they had the best safe auto in Edison. Um, we had two great evenings of practice with them. Their teleoff was good and they were uh, scoring above their projected average in six of their matches. Um, we really liked the robot. They were just um, consistent enough and they were ranked so low because their schedule was really, really hard. Um, they played against, I think it was, seven or eight of the top 10 teams in their qualification matches. So they were ranked lower than they sh should have been if they had a, a normalized schedule. And moving on to Don't Blink, um, the pick that was kind of one of the dark horses going in um, to Alliance Selection that we hadn't really heard being thrown around a lot. So Don't Blink um, had some issues throughout the week with some uh, technical issues. They were breaking in a few matches. Um, but they had a really, really interesting stat that I didn't hear anybody talk about, and I haven't really heard anybody talk about. And so on average, they were scoring 18% above their projected match scores while forcing their opponents to score 13% below their projected match scores. So this uh, net change we saw as an opportunity to exploit any limbs. And so because we can exploit any limbs, uh, the differential there, um, it could lead to us winning matches where we shouldn't win them um, 
and winning matches by an even larger margin in matches that are supposed to be really, really close. So we knew that Don't Blink was going to be the dark horse going in. And after line selection, we would go to Don't Blink's practice field uh, with Kooky Bots and, and Cruise Control and Juice, as well as our alliance. And that night, we just ran matches. We ran practice. And if we could go next slide. Um, and these different fields at these hotels at Worlds allow teams to practice different strategies and run against other robots. So we ran our auto against Kooky Bots um, as uh, the main one because we wanted to see how our robot would fare against any sort of defense played against us. And so while Don't Blink was fixing the robot and rewriting their um, new centerline auto that they would deploy to limbs, um, we were practicing with quality control and working with some of our mentors as well as some of our friends from different teams back in California who were feeding us match data about how strategies would play out against VC Silver Circuits, um, Brainstormers, and the NAC. And so for all that information, we were just feeding in to adjust and fine tune our strategy to go into semifinals. Um, and so we left the hotel and we're like, uh, this is gonna be good. I think we have a solid strategy. We had a great night of preparation. And so we go into a list, um, we take, uh, we get taken to three matches in semifinals. Um, quality control and brainstormers both broke in match two and brainstormers did not play in match three. So, um, we were able to pull out the win in semifinals, um, and then moving on to finals, um, we swept both matches um, with uh, Don't Blake running both times as their auto was starting to prove to be more and more um, effective against different teams as uh, they were starting to move teams and um, cause issues with their autos. Uh, one of the big pieces of scouting information that really helped us with this is we knew going into our first semifinal match, the VC Silver Circuits, um, did not have uh, like a position lock in their autonomous. So we knew if uh, Don't Blink hit them out of the way, they would uh, not know where they are and try to score while scoring nothing. And so Don't Blink was able to do that. Um, however, they also knocked over their stack. So the first match was really, really um, uh, close in the semifinals, but moving into event finals um, and uh, conference finals, um, we had about a three hour break between award ceremony um, for Edison to conference finals. And from there, our drive team took a break because the nerves were really, really high um, for us. And so we went to FRC with one of our mentors and toured FLL because we hadn't done that all week because we were so busy. And going into um, event limbs, uh, we did not have our actual match strategy until about 10 minutes before the match. And playing as Wolfpack Machina, Robo Octopi, and out of the box, um, we were given our match strategy and we're like, okay, this is going to work. Um, and so because we were able to win the coin toss, we were able to um, force Wolfpack to run against Don't Blink and Auto, which uh, worked both matches. Um, the first semifinal match was really, really close because both Don't Blink and us picked up a bunch of uh, cone possession penalties in Auto. Um, so that made it way closer um, than we would have liked it to be. Um, but we were able to pull out that. And then quality control and Don't Blink um, closed out uh, conference finals um, with a large win um, aided by some penalties from uh, the Ocho um, Alliance. And so going to an event finals, um, it was really, really stressful because our team had been like talking about it all year. Like, oh, we're going to get to Worlds. Oh, let's go win Worlds. Let's go win Worlds. It's kind of like thrown around very, oh, let's go win Worlds. It's it's the, it's the thing. And everybody's like, okay, they're, 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 they're crazy. Um, and so when you're actually there, it's it's very surreal because you're in that moment, you're standing there on the stage and there's thousands of people watching and you're with your team, you're with your family and everybody is just beyond uh, stimulating for your brain. And so you're just standing there and you're getting ready to go into that match. And it's one of the most calming yet stressful moments of driving that you can ever do. So going into um, finals match one, uh, we count off auto, we push our auto and we see Vertex immediately fail and we see um, Up and Creek uh, encoder disconnect. And we're like, okay, this is gonna be good. And then we fry one of our uh, servo ports on our control hub uh, partway through auto. So in finals match one, three of the four robots were broken. Um, Don't Blink was the only robot that was working. Um, however, we were still able to pull up the win. And this was really, really good for us because we're like, okay, Don't Blink's working, quality control's working. We can sit out a match. If we need to go to three, we can run again. So we were working on getting our port fixed. 
we ran quality control, and uh, lo and behold, quality control and dopamine pulled out the win, and we won the race, uh, which was crazy. It's still crazy to think about. It's like you don't believe it. Um, and just some of the strategies that led to us winning worlds, um, don't blink's auto that they rewrote the night before the competition or the night before finals was awesome. It was legal, and they did an amazing job with it, so it destroyed many autos throughout elimination matches. Um, our disruption auto uh, worked against Brainstormers. Um, we played against them uh, two times when we ran our auto, once in qualifications and once in semifinals. And through them, uh, they only scored four cones when we scored a net total of six. And so that was a little bit of a differential there that we saw as an advantage that we leveraged um, because of that disruption auto. And then quality control safe auto really helped us because it was consistent uh, uh, 50 points every single time. And then the mirroring strategy, of course, helped us because nobody else was running it. Um, they were just running like uh, circuit strategies, cycle, um, high cycle strategies. Um, and it was just the better strategy in the, in the end. And then we were really, really consistent. Quality control broke in semifinals, uh, match two of Edison, and we broke in world championship grand finals match one. But other than that, we were really consistent in the entire um, uh, elimination uh, round. So if we can go on the next page. Uh, the idea of why did we choose worlds? And so the idea of why you choose worlds is because it's something you can reach for. If you look for our team, we're going to aim to go to worlds. You'll get to worlds. But then it's like, then now what? By aiming to go to worlds and win worlds from the beginning of the season, people called us crazy, but it's setting your minds and your team's mindset. So it's like, we have to do everything perfectly because the skill gap is so small at the top and the top 1% of the top 1% of teams are so incredibly good that you can't leave anything up to chance. You have to be as perfect as possible. And each year, there's no such thing as the perfect design. There's no perfect autonomous. There's no perfect robot. Um, there's no perfect strategy, but there are teams that are able to leverage the resources and um, engineering challenges given to them to best accomplish these things. And I think this is best exemplified by the fact that this last year, uh, World Championship Winning Alliance was Gator Bites, Quality Control, and Don't Blink. The year before, it was Delta Force, um, Upper Creek, and Java the Hut. Um, years before that, it was um, Land Bros, Gluten Free, and uh, Not Your Average Nerds in Detroit. And then in Houston, it was uh, Boom Bots, Cobalt Colts, and Aperture Science. And so what this means is the last four world championships, championships that have been run, it's been a different team every single time on the winning alliance. There's been, the last few years, there's been no teams that have won worlds twice. And so what does that mean? That means that we don't know who's going to win worlds next year. It could be a repeat, but if history is going to tell us anything, the team that wins the worlds next year will have not won worlds in the past. And so going into the center stage season, it's not about any of the teams that you have been looking at that have been good. It's about you and how you can put your team in the best chance to win Worlds. And it's going to be about which team can write their own story going into the center stage season and giving themselves the best shot um, in nine and a half months from now in Houston. Thank you.